Hi folks, we're on our way to Preston today. So it's me and uh, brother Mike. How are you doing, Mike? Good. And uh, Mike looks like a, a, a Russian uh, <laughs> captain of the Russian army with his hat on. I am Russian. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to uh, going to Preston today, and I think uh, we've got another brother meeting us up there. So it should be good. Uh, any thoughts about uh, today, Mike? Anything that came to mind this morning in our prayer? I feel we're going to have a good day in Preston. I feel he needs the gospel in Preston. And we're going to have an impact today. I don't think it's a town that gets evangelised much, so it's going to be, I think this is probably a, a landmark. Uh, John Wesley used to go there, so I think since John Wesley, there's probably not been a lot of evangelism in the town, so maybe it's a landmark. I'm hoping so. Um, I feel we're going to have some good conversations today. Uh, I'm feeling hopeful today as well. Amen. So, yeah, I'm excited. Amen. We had a good prayer time. We had a, we had a, a good time of preparation. We read uh, Colossians chapter 1 and uh, we also talked a little bit about apologetics. We talked about uh, Saiten Bruggengate, how uh, we agree with some of his method, but we kind of have a few thoughts about maybe uh, the need to use evidences as well in discussion with people who are honest, but we, we understand what he's trying to do and uh, we know what he's saying is biblical. Uh, but we, we, we had a few few issues with this kind of how do you know what you know we, we know why he's saying it and, and it's a good thing to say yeah. uh, it's a good method but it, if not used wisely and, and with evidences uh, it can be like a, a way of trying to avoid questions over to you Mike, what do you think mate? Yeah definitely, it's good using presuppositions but also I think People, if people are asking genuine questions, the you know it's it's okay to let your guard down and answer a question. It's not going to lead you into a you yeah, know yeah. It's not always a battle of wills, but yeah, I yeah. can still understand this position because he's saying, well, without knowledge, how can you know anything? So he's trying to get them to see their very inerrancy before he talks about deeper stuff. Um, he was saying in his video that talking about the Bible and stuff like that should only be the believers, not the unbelievers. So, so he's a very 100% um, uh, what's the word, presuppositionalist. <laughs> yeah, 100% so, purist in pre presuppositionalism. I, I think, I think uh, when you look at Van Til, if you look at the lectures by uh, uh, Greg Banson on, on Van Til, there's three lectures that you can get on YouTube. And, and in those lectures, Greg Banson says that um, that even Van Til, when he's doing his presuppositionalism, he go take students for a coffee and he talk to the students and if the students asked him questions, he would answer those questions. Um, and also the other thing about presuppositionalism is there's a certain method that Greg Banson used and that is you put yourself in your opponent's shoes and then you show the internal inconsistency of the method. Where Sai Ten Brunge, what he does is he just shuts everybody down, doesn't he, from yeah. having any kind of discussion. And um, yeah, um, I understand why he's doing that. Uh, and it's good if, if there are people who are arrogant, to, you can just cut them off. But it doesn't engender. A, it doesn't further the discussion. It doesn't further the discussion and dialogue, and I think that's needed. Sometimes with genuine people who are, who are genuine and honest in asking questions, yeah? Yeah, so it needs to further the discussion. If we're going to get bogged down with how do you know this, how do you know that, there's, I mean, sometimes we can come to a truth claim without having to necessarily have, you know, like uh, evidences. We can assert uh, certain things are true without having to have an authority for that truth. It's just that it, it, it is the case basically so yeah we sometimes just to get the discussion along we can just assume can't we but yeah and then someone can say you could be wrong but yeah yeah but but, but i think it's I, the likelihood of that. I think i think though uh presuppositionalism is correct in undermining foundations 
Yeah. But it's just like if you want the conversation to go, if you want to steer a conversation and answer answer people's questions. If you keep holding them to the fire all the time, you're not going to get anywhere in discussion, are you? You, you need to move the discussion on and then bring the person back to the presupposition if he starts to go into that area, if that person starts to get into that area again. Yeah, yeah. Then bring it back, not constantly keep, ah, ah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we were talking about salvation as well this morning, weren't we, and about the gospel. Oh, if you want to resources, go and listen to Greg Benson's uh, lectures on apologetics. Go and watch uh, at How to An Answer a Fool, a documentary about Site and Brugengate. Really good documentary. Uh, and also, uh, if you really, really want to study apologetics, dive into Presuppositional 101, a website, and there are lectures and books that you can download there, Presuppositional 101 you want to get into presuppositionalism. Uh, but we studied the scriptures, we read uh, Colossians chapter 1 this morning, we talked about the gospel and uh, we also talked about Matthew 25 where uh, it's not just about believing but you've got to practice what you preach, showing love. Any thoughts about that Mike? Yeah, uh, the Bible says that God is love. The Bible says that love is patient, love is kind, it doesn't keep a record of wrongs, um, it's not rude, it endures all things, um, bears all things, uh, and love only rejoices with the truth. So we rejoice with the truth, but we do it with love. Um, the Bible says that how can we love God if we do not love the brother that we can see by our own eyes? How can the love of God be in us? So this is something that God commands us to do, is to love, Jesus says, to love one another as I love you. So yeah, it's a command and it, it, it's necessary because without love, um, it says in Corinthians, we're just like a, a, a sounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Yeah. Um, Paul says, if I have faith that can move a mountain, I have not love, then I'm nothing. So without love, there's nothing, you see. Amen, amen. So, so we were just talking about love and the importance of loving family, loving friends, loving people around us. Because we, we, if we don't have love, then might as well just pack up and go home folks so anyhow we're going to just show you where we're going we're on the way to Preston on the N61 now. on the N61 I feel like we're Blackburn <laughs> you feel like we're Blackburn but we can't we've got to we've got to beat Gareth so we can't do it been down this road many times when we were in the youth going to London. Jason uh, Peterson, the Christian guy is really, really good, really, really well, well informed guys. You know, they were talking about evolution and science, and the philosophy of science and evolution, and, and uh, they come up with a, a pearl. And it's quite deep. I, I don't pretend to fully understand it, but it was quite deep. But basically, they were saying that. A lot of science, and a lot, and, and especially evolutionary science, yeah. is based on logical fallacies. All right. And one of the fallacies is what is called affirming the consequent. Yeah. And uh, so, for example, da Charles Darwin said, "If my theory shows that the fossil record gets more complex and complex, yeah. that will prove evolution true." But it's an assumption. Because you're not observing the actual process, yeah. so you're just assuming that it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's called um, it's affirming the consequent. You're, you're affirming the, you're affirming it before it even actually uh, yeah. been demonstrated. It's like saying it's going to rain tomorrow. It doesn't say yeah, it's definitely going to rain. There's the temple, is it? All right. 
So, so a lot of evolutionary science and science generally is based on a lot of logical fallacies. And I, I just found that really fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's got the angel at the top, that's meant to be the angel with the trumpet in its mouth, that's meant to be Moroni blowing the trumpet in Is it? Well, it's got an angel at the top, that's why. Got a bit of it anyway, I've got a bit. So, yeah, so uh, that's, uh, if you go to uh, Jason Peterson, the uh, YouTube channel, Jason Peterson, YouTube channel is called uh, The Clarkian uh, Apologetics. If you go, if you, if you Google Clarkian Apologetics, um, or type in Jason Peterson and Dustin Seegers, wow, those guys really know their stuff. They're really, really good guys. Uh, if you want to get into apologetics, get on that YouTube channel. It's really, really good. I, I was listening to them and my eyes were popping, bro. I, I couldn't follow them. <laughs> I thought, boy, these guys know the stuff. <laughs> they were really good. But you got to stretch yourself sometimes. So, yeah. But we had a good prayer time today, didn't we? And, and uh, the thing is, we're, we're moving forward uh, on, on Royal Blood Ministries. We're working more as a team, aren't we? And, uh, and you can see the benefits today when me and Mike met. We're much more prepared, weren't we? we? We had preparation in reading the Bible, preparation in prayer, preparation in discussion, and, and working as a team in a ministry. Uh, I feel the benefits of it this morning. It, it, I, I don't think I've ever been out in street preaching more prepared uh, than I have today because of the way we were today. You know, it was really, really good, so... We've got a, tri we've got a camera tripod, we've got a new table, better camera equipment, and our apologetics is getting better. Well, it's a lot better. I'm not saying that it was bad or anything, it's just, it's just we're just gaining more knowledge, and we're getting better at what we do. And basically, uh, we want the ministry to continue, we want to save, get people saved, and Hyde Park's coming up soon, so... That's another area that we do, Hyde Park. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's good to test stuff. It's good to get stuff, material that you've learned, and putting it out there and seeing what reactions you get from it. That's, that's, I find that quite interesting. Oh. Especially with Muslims, because they like to dodge any, they like the masters of deception, they like to dodge <laughs> the issues. They like the magicians of apologetics. <laughs> that's it. They don't, they don't do apologetics, they do, but they do the smoke like, and mirrors. More like Ken Dodd. Yeah. No, but I know what you mean, it's like... Now you see him, now you now don't. Now you don't, yeah. Now you see the argument, now the argument's gone, yeah. and now it's back yeah. to you again. Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> we were talking about the Bible, but now we are. I thought we were talking about the Quran. You know, they never want to talk about the Quran, I wonder why. Uh, I suppose if I was a Muslim, I wouldn't really want to deal with the Quran, because they can't understand it, how can someone else... can't be defended, bro. It's a political. It's a political production. It's a political, yeah. It's nothing to do with God. Yeah. God, would not, God is not the author of confusion. Nor does he. Um, nor is he. Nor does he. Such a bad mistakes in history, you know. Um, a God that just comes. It just says you're going to hell forever, you know. Forget that. You know, I want a loving God. That's what the Bible provides. Yeah. So, Muslims, you need to repent and you need to come to the real truth, which is Jesus Christ, the saviour of all mankind, the nation, the hope of nations. The whole world is dependent on him. Not all the whole world has that um, mindset, but they do need him. He is the only way. So Muslims, stop reading the Quran and start reading the real book of God, the Bible. Amen. Just get a bit more. We're on our way to Preston, folks. Do some mission and evangelism, one-on-one, -on -one, talking to people, preaching the gospel. So, uh, Royal Blood Ministries on the move today. It feels good to get out of the, uh, into a different town and get a different feeling. Preston has got a few uh, Muslims in it as well. It's Christian, I'd say, based on the source. But as a car, I'd like to have that car there, it's an electric car. 
the road to? Uh, leaf on the, uh, it's got oh. exhaust on it. It's, it's pure electric. What, this one? The flat one there moving on and on. It's electric car. Wow. This old leaf, beautiful. I'm starving, me, are you? Oh, yeah, I'm getting there. I need, I need some dindins. Don't think about it. Oh, yeah. I had a uh, marmalade sandwich this morning. La pizza. Marmalade butter from up there. So, so you can get anything. There's loads of pizza places in Preston. We've also got KFC and yeah, whatever. Yeah. So whatever you want here now. I uh, started doing my weights. Have you? Yeah, I did some weights this morning. Oh, that's good. It's good to get, get me all And uh, I started going to walk every day now. Yeah, that's I'm trying to get some uh, more. <laughs> well, we hope, uh, we, we have to see. Can't say much on the camera though. Yeah, I'm speaking to Lady in the moment. <laughs> uh, just wanted to honest friend myself a bit. I've been talking to her. Well, we'll see how it goes. So, the, if we wanted to have a go to the Lake District, this is the way to go to the Lake District. Is it? Lake District, yeah. Yeah, you just carry on. It's beautiful in the Lake District, folks. Amazing. Southport's better, mate. Southport's alright. It's, right, yeah. it's more peaceful. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <coughs> St. Anne's is nice. St. Anne's, yeah, yeah. Here's our exit. Oh, Blackburn's good. Well, you've been Blackburn for each Yeah, time. yeah. It's like <coughs> preaching in Nelson, or not. Oh, yeah, Nelson. Not like yeah, yeah. Last of the Alamo. <laughs> not one of them out towns you get in doing the Wild West, you get them towns on the road. There's two. It is, a, mate, it is. Let's have a 12 o'clock uh, <coughs> stand up. <coughs> That's what it's like. So we're two miles away now from Preston. Which is Are we? Two miles away. There's a lake down there, there's some river. Prison. It's got a, a like a, a big prison and that on it. What, in Preston? Yeah. Preston's where Ken Barlow came to when he was accused of uh, doing sexual crimes at Preston Ground Park. Oh, right, Ken Barlow, right. Uh, was it William Roach? He got found not guilty, by the way. Yeah, uh, right. Manchester Crown Court. We had to initially go Preston for the proceedings. Right, right, right. I don't, I don't know much about it, bro. So... The hospital of Preston's huge as well. Massive, Is it? Yeah, massive. Bigger than any house. Right? Yeah, we've made good time, mate. So this is a preaching trip, <laughs> evangelism trip to Preston, folks. <coughs> Come and join us on these mission trips. I think next time we'll do Blackpool, definitely. You want to do Blackpool? Yeah. You want to do Blackpool, folks? Come and get some Blackpool rock. There's a sign outside one of the churches in Blackpool that says the wages of sin is death. We don't see many of those in the churches out in, out in my area. Have you ever been to Blackpool Tabernacle? No, I've been to the Baptist Church in Blackpool. Right. Was it Baptist Church or something like that? I've not been to the Tabernacle, though. I've never been, but I used to get some tapes. I had some tapes of a preacher. Yeah. An old preacher there at the Tabernacle Baptist. Uh, Tabernacle. Blackpool Tabernacle. And he. I can't remember his name, but he was really, really good. Really good old preacher. Do you, know, do you know where you're going, bro? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know where we're going, man. Yeah, I know where we're going. Just have to walk the towns, I know. I'll try, I'll, park, I'll try and park in the same place I did last time, and then we'll have the sun. What, have I been to Blackpool with you? I don't know people have to go. Uh, no, uh, Preston with you? No, no, we have. 
Oh, yes, we are. I went to Kieran, it was like. You beat me Kieran, hadn't you? Yeah. Like the show down at the OK Corral. <laughs> <laughs> we had loads coming out of the pubs and everything, mate. The Magnificent Seven, didn't they? The Magnificent the Seven. The Dirty Dozen. Oh, the Clean Dozen, should say. The Clean Dozen, yeah. yeah. The rum crew from Manchester. Yeah. So where are we now, bro? Coming um, just on the outskirts of Preston. Right. Uh, I think the jail's down here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Somewhere around here, the jail. Oh, there's the Alpha Corps. It's lovely. I've seen a book by Nicky Gumbel called Alpha. Is it? Have you heard of that book? I've read it, yeah, I've read it, yeah. So it's well, a lot of people criticise it, and I don't agree with the ecumenicalism, you know, like, the connect because it's connected to the ecumenical movement, so I don't agree with that, because the ecumenical movement's false, because it, they join forces with people that, that are not biblical. But, the actual content itself, the actual book, the actual course, is okay. Um, I've seen like, there's a guy who's connected to the Met Tab, Metropolitan Tabernacle, oh, yeah. can't remember his name, but he's written books criticising it, but I, I, I just think you're pulling the rabbits out of a hat, you just, it's... You've got to look at it for what it is. Yeah, it's just a basic course and it, it's helpful yeah. uh, to people, you know. Definitely. Uh, Christianity Explored is another good course by uh, Rico Tice. Um, that's another good one. But the good course is because what you can do is you can have a meal with someone or a group of people and get them together and talk yeah. and, and get them into the scripture. So so if you, if you want to reach out in your church or you want to reach out and do church planting, it's, yeah. it's a good method to, to do, you know. Are you alright? Yeah. Phone's going. Look at office. Sales coming. I think it's that way. Um, I'll just get my phone out and I'll just get. Just type Sandos into my 